Gates of heaven, let it rain on us today. Thou art the potter, we are the clay. Make us into what you originally designed for us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody who loves the Lord, say amen. amen. Genesis chapter 42. Genesis chapter 42. I'm reading from the New International Version of the Bible, so it may read slightly different than yours. Genesis chapter 42, verse 1. When Jacob learned that there was grain in Egypt, he said to his sons, why do you just keep looking at each other? This was a powerful statement to me because when you are in need, why are you getting advice from people who have the same need as you? So you're in need and you listen to somebody on Instagram who has a bigger need than you. Why do you keep going to one another? He continued, I have heard that there is grain in Egypt. Go down there and buy some for us so that we may live and not die. This is one of the most powerful declarations you will ever make in your life. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I shall live and not die. And not die. <laughs> then 10 of Joseph's brothers went down to buy grain from Egypt. But Jacob did not send Benjamin. He did not send Benjamin, Joseph's brother with the others because he was afraid that harm might come to him. So Israel's sons were among those who went to buy grain for there was a famine in the land of Canaan also. Go back to verse four. But Jacob did not send Benjamin. Do me a favor, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God told me to tell you, it's all about the Benjamins. Let's have a word in here tonight. Let's preach. Touch somebody and say, it's all about the Benjamins. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. So it has been about 20 years since Jacob has seen his son Joseph. Remember, 
his brothers threw him in the pit. What do we mean by pit? Pit, an empty cistern. It was a, a well that used to have water. They threw him in something that used to have water. So technically they threw him in a dry place. He came from a wealthy place. Purple coat, he was dressed wealthy when he arrived. They took the coat from him as a indicator that they were taking his position. If you're here by the end of the sermon, you'll find out it didn't work. Because by the time we get to this text, Joseph is second in command, not in Canaan, but in Egypt. Well, you don't understand. That's like, that's like being born in America, becoming the president of Nigeria. It's, it's, it's theoretically impossible. First of all, he has no citizenship. He has no visa. He has no green card. He has no birthright. And yet, he is vice president in a place where he was not born and unwelcomed. What are you going to do when you are in charge of the place that doesn't want you? You see, what most of us, we suffer from the anxiety of not being wanted where we arrive, but sometimes God will allow you to go into a place where you're unwelcomed to show all of those who did not welcome you that they should have. because they had no idea what God was going to do with you in this place. Y'all got time today? And the reason why they are in Egypt is because there is a shortage of bread in Canaan. The Bible says that there is a famine in the land. Now, go back and read it from a historical standpoint. There isn't just a famine in the land. There is a famine in both of the lands. There is a famine in Canaan and a famine in Egypt. But Egypt has been so rich over the years that the famine can't touch them. You did, did you hear what I just said? That you can be in a position that things can dry up and it don't. touch you, that, that inflation can swell, but it don't touch you. There can be a housing crisis and homes are unavailable, but when you decide it's your time to buy, it can't touch you. That 50% of marriages can be ending in divorce, but, but, but it won't touch you, that people in their 60s are in the hospital looking at scans and cell deformation, but, but it won't touch you. Tell somebody it ain't going to touch me. I, I don't care what they do in the White House, it ain't going to touch me. I don't care who gets elected next, it won't touch me. I, I don't care what happens to the economy, it, it might touch you, but it ain't. It ain't gonna touch. It ain't, oh God, it ain't gonna touch me. I don't, I don't know what's happening across the street, but I know what's gonna happen on my street. I don't know what's happening in that state. I know what's gonna happen in my state. I don't know what's gonna happen with your children. I know what's gonna happen to my children. Let me tell you ahead of time, it ain't gonna touch me. There was a famine in Canaan and in Egypt. They're going to be in between. So there is a famine where they are and a famine where they're going. And see, sometimes God will do that, is he'll dry it up in front of you and he'll dry it up behind you to find out if you'll trust him. 
where you are. I, I just want to know who's in the room today that can just testify. It's a famine where I am, and it looks like it's a famine where I'm going. But, but my hope ain't built on the past. My hope isn't built on the future. My hope is built on nothing less. There's, there's trouble where I'm going. There's trouble where I am, but it ain't going to touch me. <laughs> 2024 ain't looking so good. I don't know about you, but it ain't going it ain't going to touch me. I, I know they say there's a resurgence of COVID-19, and that may be true, and I pray for all of those who may have to go through it, but a thousand shall fall, and 10,000 at my side, but it won't. I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout, it won't touch me. It won't touch me. Matter of fact, I want you to touch somebody and tell them that touch is a touch to make sure that it won't touch you. That's why you better make sure you sit next to the right person. You better, you better make sure you, you're next to somebody who got a, the right touch. Come on, I, I need you next to somebody that if they touch you, demons will tremble. That if they touch you, the famine, I'm talking to you at home. The famine exposed several things. First of all, the famine showed Jacob that his son was not dead. And then the Lord told me that famines are revealers. Sometimes God will dry it up so you can see the conditions you've gotten used to. See, go back and check the record. When, when, when Hurricane Katrina descended its fierceness upon Louisiana, and in particular, New Orleans, most of the catastrophe that you saw online didn't happen as a result of the hurricane. There are already impoverished parishes in the city, and we got an opportunity to see how America had forgotten that group of people. The hurricane exposed it. So sometimes God will send a storm to show you what you've been abandoning, and God will send a storm to show you what level you have been settling for. And I came to huff and puff and blow your house down to show you that you have been settling for less. And performing poorly. Because you are the righteousness of God. You are an heir and a joint heir of a king. So when you are the child of a king and you live outdoors, it must mean that you have defected from the privileges of your birthright. Famines expose. Famines expose people who didn't save when it was good seasons. Inflation exposes people who were living beyond their means before the inflation started. Come on, y'all. Holler at me. I ain't got time. When you lose your job, it only exposes what you did with the money that you got when you had a job. Because had you been putting away in surplus like a famine was coming, then when a famine came, you would still have bread to eat. But when you eat all of your bread in the morning, somebody say the famine exposes. What's happening in America right now, it may be a problem, but it only exposes what you did when the bubble wasn't burst. If you don't live right when you are making it, you can't live right when you're not. You've got to make a decision to live right with your finances when it is good so that when the famine comes, it can't. Come on now. 
No, no, you did not need the Louis bag, but, but you bought it, and now the famine is here. Your leather is good, but your bank account is bad. And now you got a purse with no money in it because you didn't save it when the famine came. Come on, talk to me. Instead of buying a Birkin bag, you need some Birkin stock, and I ain't talking about shoes. <laughs> When, instead of buying Gucci, go get you some stocks and bonds and diversify your portfolio. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Because the famine is coming. If you go back and check history, every 15 years, the economy changes. Every 12 to 15 years, we always get shocked. Oh, here come inflation. Uh, let me ask you something. How many years are you going to be surprised that milk gets more expensive? <laughs> oh, milk is $9. Well, yeah, it's going to be $10 next year. Oh, I can't believe the price of eggs. Keep living and waking up. Because right now, you got to understand, we live in a capitalistic society. And food has become merchandise. And companies have cornered the market on essentials. And there will never be a time when gas is 69 cents, 79 cents, and 89 cents again. So you can stop complaining, talking about gas is high. Guess what's going to happen next year? Guess what's going to happen in 2030? So you got to start governing yourselves accordingly because the famine It's coming. The famine is coming. The famine is coming. The famine is coming. The famine is coming. The cost of school is going to keep going up. The famine is coming. You're never going to wake up and they say, oh my God, they brought the cost of tuition down to where I can afford it. The famine is coming. And it resulted in the days of Jacob that his entire family had to move to Egypt, which was predicated upon the prophecy that God told him in Genesis 15 and 13 when he said that his whole family would settle there for the next 400 years until Moses emancipated them. I don't... I, I, I just got to pastor you today. I, I just, I have to because your life is depending on it. I don't know if you know it, but God has called you to be the Moses of your family. <laughs> Which means it is your job to bring everybody out. You're the only one that has the education. You're the only one that was exposed on the level you were exposed. You're the only one in church every week getting the word spoken to you. You're the only one that has the courage to read a book. You're the only one watching podcasts. You're the only one on YouTube Googling things. You're the only one who's a researcher. Why not you? You are the only hope that your family has to come out of what has been its problem for the last 20, 30, 40, 50 years. And are you going to keep making excuses about how bad you stutter? Or are you going to keep making excuses about how bad it was for you when you were growing up and how rejected you were and how nobody loved you and, and how you grew up hard? Shut your mouth. Get your stuff together. Square your shoulders and lift up your head and decide that I'm bringing everybody in my family out. And the days that we see today and the enemies that we see today, we shall see no more. I need every Moses online 
and every Moses in this building to shout, we are coming out. Matter of fact, just tug on your neighbor and tell him, we coming out, we coming out. I know you don't feel strong, but I'm gonna drag you out. I, I know you don't feel competent, but I'm gonna drag you out. I, I know your heart ain't healed from the divorce, but we gonna build this company with tears in your eyes. I, 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 know, I know you haven't gotten over losing your job yet, but let me tell you, it was good that you were afflicted so you might learn what God really wanted to do in your life. He did not build you to work for somebody. He built you for somebody to work for you. I'm looking for somebody who's about to step into their destiny. Who's willing to walk this, this journey with me today? I said, who's willing to walk this journey with me today? Who knows that you're watching online or either you're in this building with the prophetic voice that God has put over your life? Who knows that you're looking at your pastor? Who knows that I am your spiritual leader, which means that if the oil falls on my head, it's about to get on your body. Who knows they're in the right place at the right time? Somebody shout, I'm coming out. <laughs> Famines reveal. Famines reveal. Famines reveal. Famines reveal. Listen, an argument is a famine. Uh, an argument is a famine. See, an argument shows you what state your relationship was already in. Y'all didn't break up because of the argument. Y'all broke up after the argument because you didn't take care of what the problem was really about. You didn't lose your car because they took it. You lost your car because you used the car money on the clothes. They didn't take your house because you didn't make enough money for the house. They took your house because you tried to impress people and got a house you couldn't afford in the first place. Yeah, I said it. What you gonna do about it? <laughs> Famines reveal. What you're going through right now reveals something about Daniel's decisions. My basketball coach told me, he said, Keon, when you start making money, I want you to think of it like this. When you make money, you'll go to the top of a mountain. When you're on the top of a mountain, get a shovel and start throwing dirt in the valley. He says the reason why you want to throw dirt in the valley so that if you fall, you don't have that far to go. See, if you make $10, throw a dollar in the valley. If you make $1,000, throw 100 in the valley. Throw 10 in the valley. You don't have to throw the whole check in the valley, but if you just keep putting a little bit at a time in the valley, when the famine comes, and I ain't got to the sermon yet. I need you, listen, text everybody and tell them you ain't gonna be on time. Just tell them right now, I, I, I ain't gonna make it. I ain't gonna make it. Y'all go ahead and eat without me because I'm about to get something else. Matter of fact, what I'm gonna get by the time, matter of fact, tell them, y'all can go ahead and eat. I'm gonna be so blessed by the time the sermon is over, I'm gonna come and pay the bill and then go home. That's, that's what you tell them. I'm about to help, now this is, this part, this part is about to make some of y'all mad, but I need you to check your attitude. Look at, look at them right now. If they already folded up their arms, they already got attitude. Look at them right, what are you gonna say? Tell them, unfold your arms, dog. Joseph's brothers, Philip, they threw him in the pit. And now they have no bread. Joseph's brothers were jealous of him and threw him in the pit, Brandon. And now they have no bread. Okay, let me say it one more time. Joseph's brothers threw him in the pit and now they have no bread. 
which means sometimes your bread is connected to your behavior. See, some of y'all are broke because you don't know how to treat people and you keep throwing everybody under the bus. And God says, I'm going to touch your bread because you don't know how to handle anointing. I'm going to cause a bread shortage because you got a short temper. I'm going to cause a bread shortage because you don't know how to handle my anointed. Bad behavior can lead to a lack of bread. I know you're asking God to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing you don't have room enough to receive, but in the meantime, how are you treating Joseph? How are you treating Joseph? How are you treating the one in your life that's irritating? How are you treating the one in your life that seems to be more blessed than you, but you're smarter than them and you're older than them. How do you treat Joseph? You know, the one that you think you should be better than and have more than, but somehow they have more than you and they didn't deserve it and they, you don't know how to, how are you treating Joseph? Because what you don't know is Joseph is over the bread. You'd be surprised the person you can't stand how much authority they are about to have in your next dimension. That's why you got to treat everybody right because you don't know who God is going to give the bread check to. Slap your name and say, my name is Joseph because I just had an epiphany and a dream that God put me over the whole thing. So I'm going to be looking at how you treated me when I was under you because that will determine how I treat you when I'm over you. I need somebody to shout, I'm coming up. I want the world to know. The Bible says that Jacob saw that there was no corn in Egypt, and he told his sons, Jacob saw that there was no corn in Egypt. Wake up, Jacob saw that there was no corn in Egypt. And so he sent his sons to Egypt because he heard that there was corn there. Do you hear the epiphany? He didn't discover that there was bread in Egypt. He discovered that there was corn or wheat in Egypt. Then the Lord told me to tell you that in this next season, he's not going to give you bread. But he will give you materials. <laughs> to make the bread. This is why most people don't see God, because they think that when they ask God for a chair, he's going to give them a chair. God will give you a tree and ask you to carve your chair. God don't make tables, but he does make trees. And you're going to have to make. Deuteronomy 8 and 18. For it is him that gives us the ideas, that gives us the power to gain wealth. I was sitting at the table with Pastor Rama, uh, Pastor Hammond, and Bishop Sion, and we were sitting down Tuesday and we were studying the Bible together. And, and Pastor Raymond and I literally verified by these other two men, the Lord gave us both a revelation in the same second. I hopped out of my seat, he hopped out of his seat because we were studying Deuteronomy chapter eight, verse 18. And when the Bible says he gives us the power to gain wealth, we looked up the word power in the Hebrew language and the word power in the Hebrew language is the word small reptile. Yes, sir. What? Jesus, are you talking gibberish? What does a reptile have to do with power? Then we looked a little deeper and found out that the reptile that he was talking about was a chameleon. Mm. 
Then I did a little more. Okay, what can a, what can a chameleon do? Number one, not the obvious. Number one, a chameleon can independently look in any direction with any eyes. They don't, they don't have tunnel vision. They can be looking east and west at the same time. And God says, I'm not giving wealth to people who have tunnel vision. I'm giving wealth to people who can see opportunities. I'm giving wealth to people who can see on another level. Ask your neighbor, how good can you see? Number two, a chameleon can change its color based on its environment. So, so the actual text says that God gives wealth to flexible people. See, the problem with some of us is that we are going to do what we're going to do no matter what. And God says, I'm not giving wealth to people who are going to do what they want to do. I'm going to give wealth to people who have an idea. But if I speak, they'll change the direction of their sight. Ask your neighbor, how flexible are you? Because if you're going to do what you want to do anyway, you can do what you want to do broke. In fact, doing what you wanted to do is the reason why you can't do what you want to do. I'm wondering how many flexible people online I'm, I'm looking for somebody in New Orleans. I'm looking for somebody in Los Angeles. I'm looking for somebody in Nigeria. I'm looking for somebody in London. I'm looking for somebody somewhere who's flexible enough to hear this word and recognize that God is not going to bless you to stay the same. Because if God blesses you where you are, you will get comfortable where you are and you will stay where you are because you will think that where you are is where he wants you to be. God says, I need you looking left, right, up, down, looking for opportunities, looking for somebody who can adapt. Can you be on the block with your boy say, what up, dog? You good, cuz? Yeah, I'm good, man. It's all good, bro. It's fire, cuz. You know what I mean? And can you walk right into the ballroom? Hello, everyone. How are you? I'll just tell you right now that I want to thank God for... Huh? Come on now. God says, listen, God says, I don't mind you having a red wig, but I need you to have a short black one, too. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. I need you to have an outfit for every environment. I'm trying to find somebody who's flexible. They just gonna have to take me as I am. And that's why you don't get to get in the room because everybody's not gonna take you like you are. So you need a mini skirt, and you need one that... You need, you need one that's tight, cuz your husband coming, but you need one that flow, too. Come on, come on. Fellas, you ain't getting off the hook, either, cuz you gotta have a different kind of game for the woman that God's about to send. Her name ain't Shorty. Her name is what a mama named her. And let me tell you, the one that God is about to send you, you can't buy, cause she got her own money. She's looking for a prayer warrior. Somebody, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody who understands the anointing on her life and not how thick she is. 
Well, you thick. That's all you can think about? <laughs> thick head? I got something else going for me other than my body. I got something else going for me other than how I look. I got dreams on the inside of me, and I'm looking for my help me so we can change the world together. Ask your neighbor, how flexible are you? How flexible are you? Because if you can't handle God sending you somebody who don't look like the list you made when you were dysfunctional, your list ain't upgraded, but you're asking God to do something. You got the same list that you had when you were trifling. You got the same list that you had when you were angry. You got the same list that you had when you were mean. And now God is taking you to another level. My question is, has your list changed? Do they still got to make $500,000 a month, or will you settle for $50,000 a month for somebody who can pray for your butt? And then y'all can go back and get the 500,000 together. All right. I'm only standing back here because I get a ring when I go up there. Who's flexible? You got to have multiple outfits. You got to have multiple dress codes. You got to have multiple languages. You got to have multiple conversations. It's cool to be who you are, but there needs to be another you chameleon. Matter of fact, high five three people and say, I'm a chameleon now. I'm a chameleon now. I'm a chameleon now. I'm going to make it in four different kind of ways. I got a million coming from the north. I got a million coming from the south. I got a million coming from my beauty line. But I got a million coming from the stock market. I'm flexible. All right. Well, let me tell you why some of y'all are struggling with this message. Y'all good? <laughs> let me tell you why some of y'all are struggling with this. I'm about to talk about your mama. I'm about to talk about your daddy. I'm about to talk about your grandmama. I'm about to talk about the person who raised you because the Bible says that he told them, you can't get the bread unless you send Benjamin. And Jacob said, nope. Benjamin can't go. Benjamin can't go. Now, now look at why the sons are struggling to get what they need. They're struggling to get what they need because they've been raised by a man who won't release what he has. So when I get up here and talk about tithes and offering, it's the reason why some of y'all get anxiety is because you were taught by somebody, I wouldn't get at church all my money, but they didn't tell you not to give it all to the mall. They didn't tell you not to give it all to somebody who didn't love you. They didn't tell you not to be a sugar mama. They didn't tell you not to be a sugar daddy. So here you go giving it to everybody else. And here's the problem with the church. Y'all will release everything except for Benjamin. You release a praise, you release a person, you release a friendship, but you hold on to the money. I said it. Now what you gonna do about it? Why y'all looking at me like that? You release everything except for the thing that gets you blessed. Release the praise. Oh, God, here you go. I release their relationship because it ain't good for me. I release my friendships. What about Benjamin? Because it's all about the Benjamins, about that thing that you're not willing to let go. That thing 
that you love so much. And the Bible says, money is not the root of all evil. It's the love. When you love Benjamin so much that you can't release him to get bread, Because the only way you're going to get the corn is to get rid of Benjamin. Touch three people and say, it's all about. He said, I can't send Benjamin with you. Daddy, why? The man said that if you give us Benjamin, he told them, this is what, now, can I tell you, I keep saying the man, but let me just give you some of this because I don't know how the sermon's going to go. The person that they're talking to is Joseph. They just don't know it yet because they think that Joseph is dead. So they don't know that the person that they are borrowing with to get bread is the brother that they thought was dead. So now they got to ask the person they did wrong. To do right by them. That's why you better be careful who you throw in the pit because you don't know what God is going to do with their life and you don't know what you're going to need from them in the future. That's why the old folks used to sing in their old church, I'm going to treat everybody right. This is how you know you're dealing with somebody who can be trusted. The way you know you're dealing with somebody who can be trusted is somebody who treats people right that they don't currently need. Because when a person knows that they need you, they will treat you right, they will act right by you. But when they don't know they need you, they'll walk right past you like you're nothing. But God is going to make sure that they have to come back and ask you for bread. Matter of fact, slap somebody and say, I'm a baker, baby. I'm a baker. I'm a baker. You better be careful how you treat me because I got the bread. God's going to put the bread in my hand. He thought, they thought that Joseph was dead. He said, Daddy, the man over the bread said that we got to bring Benjamin. Daddy said, no. Why did he say no? The reason he said no was twofold. Number one, I remember what happened the last time I put one of my sons in your hands. When I gave you Joseph, you didn't bring him back. And if you go back and read the Bible, the Bible says now the other brother, Simeon, is in prison because Joseph held him. So he says, I've given you two sons, and none of them have come back, and now you're asking me for a third son? Let me put it in your language. God, give me a thousand. Why? You didn't bring the hundred back. God, give me a raise on my job. You didn't do nothing with your other pay. God, let my student loans go away. Why? You didn't tithe with the money you had. You think I believe you're going to do it now? Some of your problem is God won't give you Benjamin because of how you handled Joseph. And Joseph was your test to see if you could be trusted with something valuable. And when you don't handle what you have, you can't ask for what you want. And here's the problem with most of us. We beg. For what we want. Well, I take it this way. We beg for what you need. You buy what you want. So now you have your wants and you have nothing left for your needs. What are you going to do with Joseph? Joseph is the money in your pocket right now. Joseph is the money in your purse right now. Joseph is the money in your bank account right now, and here you are asking God for Benjamin? Why would I give you anything else? Everything I gave you never came back. 
you're sitting next to somebody right now who's wearing their tithe. They got it on right now. And here, let me tell you something about God. You're going to tithe somewhere. If it ain't to him, it's going to be to the doctor. If it ain't to the doctor, it's going to be to the repair man. If it ain't the repair man, it's going to be to the, to the bail bondsman. Somebody going to get 10%. Slap somebody and say, somebody going to get it. And it ain't going to be you. How many of y'all want to be wealthy? I'm trying to tell you how to get it. You have to be willing to release Benjamin. You got to dig in your pocket right now because it's all about It's all about the Benjamins. And, and just because you stood up doing the offering, it don't please God. There has to be a transaction. You can fool us, but you can't. In fact, the Bible says that I would rather you not make a vow than to make a vow and break it. In other words, if you're not going to tie, just don't do it, but quit acting like you want it. I came to break curses. I came to set the house in order. You know why? Because with 20,000 members, there is never a need for us to have to do anything else but give once. But because you'll give him Judah, but not Benjamin. You know what Judah means, right? Judah was his other son. His name means to praise. You'll give him praise all day. but the bread is connected to Benjamin. I ain't scared either. I said I ain't scared. You might not like it, touch your name and say it's tight, but it's right. And if you can't say man, say ouch, but you better say something. I didn't make the rules, but I'm gonna enforce them. God says, I can't trust you with Benjamin because of how you handled Joseph. And don't, none of y'all, don't start acting like you got to go to work now. Sit down. You ain't got nowhere to go. Sit down. I, no, no. I'm going to put you on blast. Sit down. This is how the devil keep tricking us up. And here's the other problem with the church is that anytime a person is in need, y'all go to running and dropping money. But let me tell you something, the poor will be with you always and there is no blessing connected to blessing the poor other than getting back what you gave to them, but no multiplication. Multiplication is segregated for tithes and offering. When you give to the poor, the only thing you do is help them, but you don't help yourself. So when you give a dollar to somebody on the street talking about I did my job, God like, thank you, but it ain't going to help you. Read your Bible. Charity does not bring wealth. Only the tithe does that. Matter of fact, you don't believe me? Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to preach on it. Help me in this house, Lord, because they done lost their Holy Ghost, but it's me and you. Oh, and by the way, for those of y'all like, why he talking to us like that? Okay, go to your Bible and look at verse uh, uh, 30 and 31 of chapter 42. The Bible says, when they returned back to Jacob, the son said, the man talked to us harshly. Because see, some folk you can't talk too nice. I've been talking nice for 14 years. I got my dukes up now. I'm swinging up, down, left, right, hook, cross, because you ain't listening to nothing else. I'm tired of praying for what a dollar will get you out of. 
I can't trick God into blessing you if you don't tithe. The Bible says the tithe rebukes the devil, not my prayers. Now, if you connect your tithe with my oil, I'm going to keep, keep your foot on the gas. Watch this. Watch what he says. He says, when they get there, they said, uh, Dad, um, the dude over the bread said, that we got to bring Benjamin back. Daddy said, nah, you, you ain't getting Benjamin because you, you ain't handle Simeon right, you ain't handle Joseph right. Every time I give you a son, they don't come back. Nope, I'm keeping them. He says, Dad, we, we, Dad, we, 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 we got to eat, man. Don't you see everything dying around here? He'd rather starve with Benjamin this is how you know you got an issue, that you would rather starve. What you gonna do with Benjamin if you're dead? If you don't release Benjamin, you and Benjamin will die. Watch what he said. He said, Dad, they said, he said, uh, we gotta bring Benjamin back. Kirk, he said, we got to bring Benjamin back to prove to the man over the bread. They still don't know it's their brother. To prove to the man over the bread that we're not spies. Translation, we have to bring Benjamin back to prove to him that we are good people. Okay. What is wrong with you? This is what I would have said to them. How you going to prove to the man you threw in the pit who heard your conversation as you were walking away from him? We going to tell daddy that an animal ate him up. We going to tell daddy we don't know what happened. He's in the pit listening to this. Here they are trying to convince somebody that they are a good man and he knows they are not based on what they did to him. And this is what's happening online and in every church in America. You are trying to prove to God you can be trusted when he knows you cannot be. God, if you bless me this time, I promise you I'm going to be a tither. He's like, liar! I know your heart. I know if I get you debt free, you won't change. You won't look in every direction. You will not change. You will not be flexible. So what I'm going to do is watch you suffer. I'm going to watch you suffer. And you're going to go around and tell everybody, why did God let that happen to me? God says, but I know my reputation. I didn't let it happen to you. This one you caused yourself. You're trying to convince God that you can be trusted with Benjamin. But you didn't do right with Joseph. God, if you let my student loans evaporate, I'm going to be a giver. But you got to be a giver before I let the student loans. This is the God's honest truth. Today, everybody say today. today. A young man that I've only seen two times in my life, he's right there in the sound booth right now. I don't know why the anointing keeps happening in that sound booth. You remember Luis last couple weeks ago? This young man that's sitting right here right now who I've only seen twice in my life, he came in my office today, who put this microphone on me and said it. I, I think I had Ricky to videotape it. He said, Pastor, I just got let go from the other church. I was at another church. They let me go. He says, I'm here because Luis is out of town. He asked me to fill in. I'm looking for something, but I started my own company. And by the way, I've only been here twice, and all $37,000 of my student loans have evaporated. He's right there. Raise your hand, sir.
What am I trying to tell you? When you get in the right environment, it won't be many days before you have a testimony. I want you to slap five people and say, in two weeks, everything is going to change. Somebody shout, I'm two weeks away. I'm two weeks away. Two weeks away from being debt free. Two weeks away from being blessed. Two weeks away. Who help me, Holy Ghost? I'm trying to break somebody's curse. Satan, the blood is against you. You do not have authority in our houses. You don't have authority in our homes. You don't have authority over our families. You don't have authority over our finances. This body belongs to God. I have the joy of the Lord. I have peace that surpasseth all understanding. Imagine how hard it is trying to convince God that you are honest enough to be considered trustworthy enough for hundreds of thousands when you have not been faithful with hundreds. Be thou faithful over a few things. Please hear my voice. The day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. My sheep, not my voice, and a stranger, they were not here. I come up against every curse, every hex, every witch, every soothsayer that would try to block the ears of the people who are attentive to the word of God. Satan, I come up against you so that the people of God can be free and who the Son sets free is free indeed. Somebody say, God, take over my mind. I can't leave. I, I want to be done, but I ain't. I just can't. You have to hear the sincerity of my spirit. I have so much more to give you. And it is, will you watch not with me for but one hour? Your favorite show on Netflix is 54 minutes and you watch five episodes in a day. Can you give me an episode? Or two. Sarge, I'm going to take you everywhere I go, man. Listen to this. They get... Hmm. See, this, this one almost wrecked me. They get to Egypt. And Joseph, even though they haven't treated him right, he still loves them. <laughs> Ain't that like God? Yeah. By the way, go read your Bible. There are 42 ways that Joseph is a type of Christ. And we are in the 42nd chapter of Genesis. There are 42 ways that Joseph and Jesus are alike. And grace is one of them. So young lady, they show up with their bags and Joseph puts corn in the bag of the people who tried to kill him. But he's a chameleon because he used to be the color of a person who was angry and vindictive and upset, but now he has the color of a ruler. Had he stayed in the shape of where they threw him in, he would not have made the decision of the position he's in. Can you 
become the person that's fit for the place that you're asking God to take you. He fills their bags with corn. I can't even get it out. God, you are so good. I can't even get it out. He fills their bags with corn. The Bible says that they were on their way home and they stopped to feed their donkeys. Because you got to understand, this bread ain't just for you. It's for the donkeys. It's for the children. It's for... This bread is going to keep everything alive. They start to feed the donkeys and when they look in the bags, they see the money that they paid Joseph for the bread. Did you hear what I just said? That's like going to H-E-B, spending $300 on groceries, and getting home and finding $300 in the bag, plus the groceries. Because the moment that they made up their mind that they were going to give, they didn't even give Benjamin yet, but they made up in their mind. They didn't even have Benjamin to give, but they made up. God, y'all so sleepy. They didn't even have the money to give, but they made up in their mind that if they did, they would have. Joseph reimbursed them for the cost of the bread. See, what you don't understand is that God don't need money. He needs mind. And when you make up your mind that you will bless him with the money, he will reimburse you. <laughs> Go back and read your Bible. Abraham, bring to me thy only son. The moment that Abraham was willing to give God Isaac, Isaac reimbursed Isaac to him and said, not only will I give you the many nations, but you can keep your son because it is not about the offering, it is about your heart. And the moment you are willing to give it to me, I'll give it back to you, good measure. Press down, shaking together and overflowing. Touch somebody and shout, God is about to reimburse you. Oh, y'all don't know when to shout. God says, you tithe $2,000, and by the time you get home, there'll be a $20,000 blessing with your name on it. I'm going to give you the bread and the offering back. Somebody shout. God is all about the Benjamins. When you make up your mind, that Benjamin can be given. God says, I'll give you the bread and you can keep the corn. I'll give you the corn and you can keep the, I'll, I'll reimburse, I'll give it all back to you. That's like going to the store, swiping your credit card and finding a credit with the clothes in the bag. and they still don't know they're talking to their brother. Because it's been 20 years. And now he's in Egypt. And he has shaven his head and his face like the Egyptians. He smells like an Egyptian. He has the education of an Egyptian, which means he has the dialect of an Egyptian. They don't know they're talking to their brother because they're talking to somebody who sounds foreign to them which is what a blessed person is supposed to look and sound like. When God blesses you on this level, you ain't gonna look like, sound like, think like, 
or act like where you came from. Do I have anybody in here? Tell them somebody, I, I ain't acting funny, I'm just acting different. I'm, I'm, I'm not acting funny, but I'm just acting different. Because when God takes you where you're going, you can't act the same as you did where you came from. I refuse, I refuse to let you shout today. I am not going to E flat. I don't want you to think that I'm going to let you off the hook with a praise because I'm going to take you to the end where Judah got him to finally release Benjamin. And you keep thinking your praise is going to release everything. There are some things your praise will not release. The offering came before the release. Reuben said, Daddy, the man over the bread said, we got to take Benjamin. It's all about Benjamin, Dad. He said, I tell you what, give us Benjamin. If we don't bring him back, you can kill my two sons. Now I can hear all the parents and like, that's why I draw the line. But let me tell you what happens when you mishandle Benjamin. You always have to offer that which was unnecessary. See, when you don't give him what he asked for, now you got to offer your kids, and you got to offer your house, and you got to offer your car, and you got to offer your peace, and you got to offer your happiness, and you got to offer your joy. You are paying too much. The cost of your joy was the Benjamins. But because you're stingy with them, you got to lose sleep and happiness. And joy. Look at how much you are paying because you won't release your money. When you don't handle Benjamin right, you always have to pay more for the bread. Preach, Keon. It's the best sermon you heard today. I know it for a fact. Now he got to give. Now he got to give up his two sons because he handled the Benjamins wrong. What are you going to do when he opens up the heavens and pours out on you a blessing you don't have room enough to receive? I'm telling you what I'm going to do right now before this sermon is over. We're giving a curse-breaking offering today. And I'm going to tell you right now, it came from the Lord. The Lord told me to tell you that when we get there, we're going to read Psalms 109 and verse 28. 28 being the number of wealth. 109 being the number. I'm only giving you two options, either 109 or 28. I'm telling you we're doing it at the end of the service. And so don't, don't get nowhere to go. Online, I'm telling you right now that God told me that this is a curse-breaking offering. I read it in my Bible in my bed this morning. My wife looked around the corner to find out what I was doing. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I was up an hour earlier than I normally am because he was speaking to me. Asked the production team. I was sending them notes at midnight. So you calculate sending a sermon at 12, 1 in the morning and waking up earlier than you, you'll know that I've been cocked and ready to go. Because I'm not going to let the devil keep dragging you down and you coming to this altar up here praying about a cell phone bill. The devil is a lie. If you come up here, we're going to be talking about cancer and lupus and heart attacks and hypertension and blood pressure. But we are not going to be praying about things that money can buy. You are the lender and not the borrower, but you got to handle Benjamin right. Now, I know everybody ain't going to get it. I know some of y'all going to leave here the same way you came. But I promise you, 
by the word of the Lord and the anointing on my life that this is a curse-breaking exercise. Today, the spell will be broken. Somebody shout, God, reimburse me. Now watch this. Listen to me. They still don't know that this is their brother. Didn't I tell you that Joseph was a type of Christ? Read John 1 and 11. He came to his own, and his own received him not. See, I'm talking in here right now what God says, but it's not reg registering to your spirit because sometimes he comes to his own. And his own doesn't receive him. But here is the consequences for not receiving him. Depart from me. When you need me, I never knew you either. What you don't know about God is he's jealous. The Bible says, I am a jealous God. I'll have no other thing before me. The day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. They didn't know it was their brother. And then the story turns. The plot twist finally reveals itself. Jacob said, because he's still, he's a chameleon, right? So he went from speaking like an Egyptian for a minute and said, yo, bro. They thought they saw a ghost. Like, nah, it couldn't be. <laughs> Levi, what up? Joseph, is it, is it really you? No way we thought you had survived. Could it be that the dream you told us about in chapter 37 that one day we would be bowing to you. We need bread. And they bow. Because the day is coming when every person who mishandled you It's going to have to bow down to you. Oh, no. It can't be. We thought you were dead. Dad! Daddy! Joseph is still alive. And the Bible says that Jacob was about to die and he refused to die long enough till he see his son again. Take me to him. I won't die until I see him. I thought he was dead. Where is he? Dad, he's, he's in Egypt. You'd be proud of what he became. He's doing better than all of us. He's not hungry. He's, he's got bread and he's willing to share it in spite of what we've done to him. And the Bible says that Joseph wanted to see his father so much that he sent a wagon to go pick him up. And let me tell you, if you're ever going to be blessed, listen to his mindset. He didn't just send a wagon for his father. He sent a wagon for his brothers and their children. 
and their wives. The Bible says he sent enough wagons to pick up 66 people, not including the wives of his brothers. Enough limousines to bring 70 people back from a boy who was just so poor and sitting in the pit to sending enough escalades to bring 70 people back to him. You're not, I want you to think about Joseph's garage. How many cars do you have to send to pick up 70 people without renting one? And he tells his brothers, I forgive you. What you meant for evil, God made it for my good. But you are still going to have to release Benjamin because you can't manipulate God. Benjamin is still a requirement even if you're in his heart. So what we gonna do? You gonna hold on to Benjamin because you think I'm so happy that you're here? You think you, you, you just gonna keep Benjamin in your pocket and tell me at least I showed up? I still require Benjamin to be released. Why? Because Benjamin is the only real brother he has. Because Benjamin is the only other son that was born by Rachel. So Benjamin is, is his only full-blooded brother. The others are half-brothers. Some came from Leah and other wives. These are Rachel's only two boys, which happens to be Jacob's favorite wife. So in order for us to get back on terms, I need Benjamin. My flesh and blood. I don't know who this message was for. But I come up against every financial curse. that has come upon your family from years and years of mishandling Benjamins. I have no doubt in my mind that the reason all of my needs and wants are met because Gwendolyn Scott made sure that when I was six years old that I gave God a dime out of every dollar. She taught me early that the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. Okay, the cats, the cats out the bag. The truth is on the table. Every person online, if you are in a safe position, if you are not behind the wheel of a car and your hand is not on a steering wheel, if you are in a safe position, I want you to stand right where you are. I want you to open your Bible or your phone to Psalms 109 and 28. I'm talking to you at home. Lighthouse Nation, I'm talking to you. You don't get off the hook. This is a corporate anointing. And I'm about to change your life. Through the only means I know 
which is the Word of God. I don't have anything else to give you but the Word. The Bible says, while they curse, you will be blessed. May those who attack you be put to shame. Speak it over your life. That those who attack you, every demon, witch, warlock, hater, liar, deceiver, family member, fake friend, spirit of wickedness in high places. The spell is broken. God is about to cross his hands and the first shall become last and the last shall become first. If you can feel faith arising in your spirit, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. The curse is broken. The matter has been settled. God's about to switch his hand. The anointing is about to fall on your house. The Ark of the Covenant is coming to your house. There is a blessing at Obed-Edom's house. Let the redeemed of the Lord shout yes. The Lord told me when I was at home, he said, I know your reluctance. It didn't start with you, but it can end with you. What you're going through, the tension between what I'm saying and what you believe, Jacob passed it on. I, I know. But see, but see, Jacob had a problem with holding on to stuff, Esau. He, he was always holding on to something he should have let go. He was born with this issue. And sometimes your parents are born with issues that they teach you because they think they serve them correctly. but the destiny God has for you ain't your mama's. My mother told me, she said, son, you lead that church the way God told you to. This is when my father was alive. He was trying to force me to do it the way that he knew how to do it, but if I had done it the way he did it, you wouldn't be here. so that God can give you daily bread. If you're in this place today and you're online, I have no reservations about what I'm getting ready to ask you to do because I know what the Lord told me. Anybody in this church who's been here 14, and this is another thing that I've learned. I've learned not to genuflect to people who don't know me and watch clips. I have to get over this because I let this click society make you have to be careful with everything you do because people take 30 seconds and make it look like you said something you didn't say. I don't give up. I say I'm still working on it. A care about what the devil's about to say. Because what God is going to do in your life, the devil wants to prevent. And he wants you to be psychologically dead. So that when he comes to his own, 
it's on we'll receive him not. How many of you heard the Lord in this room and online since you've been here today? Y'all pray for me because I'm, I'm a chameleon. So I'll be, I be changing this stuff, you know what I mean? Like, I'll be up here thinking I'm a preacher, and then one day I, look, I think I'm in Gary and everything just changed. I'm working on it, all right? Do you hear me? I got it. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to get there. I promise you in Jesus' name. You got two options. You got a gift of 109, and you got 28. By the way, zero is not an option. Because some of y'all say, I can't afford to do this. Well, let me tell you something. You can't afford not to. It's all always been about the Benjamins. Do you know why Judas hung himself? Because he mishandled the Benjamins. Yeah. 